Clash between Australia and Zimbabwe in the women's pairs. Very much looking forward to this contest. Australia's Com Games winning duo of Alan Ryan and Christina Christic up against Karen Sinclair and Jane Rigby of Zimbabwe. Hopefully you do have the audio there. We are sorry having a couple of gremlins in our tech issues this morning. But Baz, fingers crossed on the second start. We've got, uh, we've got, well, cooking with gas. Yeah, well done, mate. Now we're uh, ready to go now. And so are the players. We're seeing bowls right in amongst the bo jack here. Seeing uh, some shots play already across the rinks. Sea of red and blue bowls, but beautiful conditions, Val. And I'm expecting this to be a really top match. Well, I thought our intro was going to be Logie Award winning. Unfortunately, the, uh, the tech uh, gremlins had their say. But, Baz, uh, let's set the scene yet again with, uh, with this as Alan Ryan tries to put another one in here, Zimbabwe with the red bowls holding one at the moment. Uh, Jane Rigby, former Commonwealth Games player in 2002, played in the singles, a runner-up in the singles champ of champs in Cyprus in 2012. But the Aussies sitting third in their group, two wins and one loss, 23-7 over Japan, 18-16 in an epic over the Swiss. Uh, they scored a five in the penultimate end to seal that one. Uh, and then 10-19 against Malta. The Maltese uh, getting the job done over them in the final session yesterday. Yeah, and that's that reset, Val. You know, you go from a certain discipline week one to coming back into another discipline week two, and you've got a formidable pair in Chrissy and Alan. Great mates. Um, they'd be really honed in and ready for this event. Certainly would be. And Zimbabwe, zero wins, two losses, and a draw, 7-31 against England. They drew Malta 18-all and defeated by the Dutch 16-22 yesterday. So, haven't able to register a win in the pairs here. Sinclair and Rigby. Sinclair using XGs. Jane Rigby using Henselite Classic 2s. And both of the Australian superstars uh, using XGs as Jane Rigby tries to fire in another one. Has she created a problem? No. I believe that's going to be one to Zimbabwe to kick us off. They're on the board early. Plenty of, plenty of blue in there, just that one red bowl. But for me, I don't know how... It... Actually, no, there's still one more to Alan Ryan. Oh, there is two. Yes. Sorry. Um, there's, uh, yeah, I don't know how how we can get... How Australia can get that out clean and not remove a few of their own bowls. So that... Yeah, well, you look at the way Zimbabwe have structured this head and that bowl from Jane Rigby coming, coming in, she could afford to sort of crash in then because they have the surplus at the back. Australia really only have that one bowl and it's not really in an area that can help them. So it might have to be a cold dead draw for Alan Ryan or it's going to be difficult. Yeah, it's going to be, no, well, it is going to be weight. So I didn't know if it was going to be forehand or backhand. So we're seeing some form of arriving weight looking to open the head up. She's not far away here, Alan Ryan. She played it well. She certainly has, and we weren't sure how she was going to get it, and she was able to. So, Alan Ryan, that is a great shot to start proceedings this morning. And, Baz, you mentioned that reset, and it's it's such an important part of this sport, and your insight has been invaluable, I think, to all of the viewers uh, throughout this fortnight so far. But being able to reset at a major event, the sectional rounds, you don't have to go through undefeated. You can get through, you can lose a couple of games as we saw in the men's triples. You've just got to have that ability to say, okay, it wasn't our day, we didn't win, we're still alive. How how do you go about that? Yeah, well, win winning form is the best formula, obviously, but you've got to be able to prepare, be prepared in these pool matches to um, negotiate those losses. So being able to not only reset from discipline to discipline, but deal with those losses, don't don't let them get get you down because the only thing you get the only thing you get with looking back is uh you know, is bad memories, bad um, you know, experiences. So if it if it didn't quite work out, you gotta grab all the positives out of your experiences and move forward with those. And sometimes we can hold on to a negative experience longer than a positive, but there's so much positive happening you know, Chrissy and that, they can even go back to last year if they like, as far as back to the Com Games or even before that. And that's the thing about this pair. They can find positives just about their relationship as, as great mates and really rely on each other that way. So when things can get a little bit down and out, grab as many positives about your experience as a pair, either on the green or off the green as friends, grab all the good and then keep that positive mindset. So for me, it'd be, it's more probably mindset. But the other thing is, Val, 
um, making sure that you've got some really good structure away from the green and you're not sort of getting um, caught up in other activities that can may distract you from really getting the job done because come Sunday when it's all said and done, you want to leave everything out there on the green. Yep, you want to know that you've given 100% Barry Lester with the best insights in the game. Current right at home, Jackaroo still at the highest level. Chrissy on the forehand, we'll just have a good look at her technique there, Chrissy, throughout the day. I'll, I'll give you a bit of an insight to how Chrissy goes about it. As much as their deliveries, Chrissy and Alan, look slightly different, there's a lot of similarities in terms of how they do set up and, and get, get the job done. And Chrissy, lovely shot there. Beautiful. Just around that front bowl for two. Led brilliantly the other day in the women's fours when we covered them, Barry. That famous win against Scotland where they were down, I think, what was it, 12 nil. Yeah, that was an amazing victory. It's probably probably one of those victories that you sort of, you, you don't want to be ever 12 nil down, but you definitely don't mind a victory where you do come back from something like that. Um, because once again, what that does to the mindset just gives you that belief that anything is possible, whether you're down and out or, or you are well in front. Once you do it once, I think you, you keep that belief and say, you know what, I've come back from this before. I can do it. It's not like it's hard, but I've done it. It's actually achievable. Oh, most definitely it is. Um, I think you know. doing something gives you that belief, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's where that reflection's really handy, Val. Um, try and reflect on those positives and uh, use them moving forward. And that's uh, all about that mindset. Alan Ryan, just trying to get in behind here. Any jack movement starting to really favour them now. So we've got, uh, we're playing in the east-west direction here. As you see the, a few shadows from the players just as the sun's coming up, moving its way. Wow, that works. Half bowl and a wiggle up for the jack. Certainly does work. Zimbabwe would be relishing this opportunity. And Karen Zinkler has also played in the World Champion of Champions back in 2017 at St. John's Park, I believe it was. Yeah, I remember that. Wow, that's, um, that's going back. Well, Alan Ryan, it's a bit of a... There's a lot of action happening already here off, yeah. uh, off angles. So yep. um, Alan Ryan getting a result there, just being up and being in the area. Um, yeah, St. John's Park. Now, we, we tested ourselves on a bit of trivia yesterday, Val, and oh, especially yeah, about the BPL and 9-9 and all that. Now, yep. when you talk about St. John's Park Champion Champions, um, I'm going to have to try and think, think of the year and the winners. So just leave me with that one. Okay, let me get the page out for you, and then so I'll be able to actually give you the answers. And I don't uh, claim to be a uh, uh, encyclopedia of lawn bowls at all. Um, oh, you're pretty, but you're pretty handy, Baz. But um, and yeah, but there are some some events that sort of stick out to me. And okay, there were two in Sydney, and I believe that they were both at St John's back Park. to back. Yep, seventeen and eighteen. They okay, were okay. Okay, well, so Laura Daniels definitely won one of them. Bang, from Wales. Yep, seventeen. Who won twenty eighteen? Well, we'll stay with 17, so that's the female winner. The yep. male winner was... Do you need a country? Hong Kong, China? No. All right. Uh, leave, me, leave me with that one. Uh, Alan Ryan on the forehand here. If she can get down under her um, under Christina's front bowl, sit the red bowl out, can make two if she gets it neat. Bowl under Jack, maybe? Oh, a little wiggle through. That'll do. Carolyn, Laura Daniels. So, Jane Rigby. What has she got here? Been playing at high-level bowls or high-level bowls for many, many years. The Australians, I reckon that'll be a couple. <coughs> Wait for Chrissy's signal before and give Baz a little bit more time to think about the trivia. I reckon the year before was here at Helensvale. Scott Thorborn and Natasha. Scotty, Scotty won 2016 and yep. Tash won 2016. Yes, that was here. So then they went to St. John's Park. Uh, Laura Daniels and who? Okay, well, let's maybe go to the next year. Um, uh, 
Lee Schrainer played in the final in 18? Uh, no. No. 17. Yes. No, Lee, Lee Schrainer won 2019 in Adelaide. Yes, he did. Sorry. Yep. Yep. So that is a two, I believe, to the Aussies. Just the signal there, but I reckon that was a two. So Christina Christic straight away, which I really love to see. It, there's no guesswork at all here. It's um really short end here. Drawing to rolling the jack to Allen's foot, and that would be all of twenty five meters, so a nice short length. So maybe that's just a clear plan that they're working on. Maybe to because uh, the green is slightly holding from the overnight rain and and the slightly damp conditions. Maybe it's a tactic to play short and just keep the touch involved. Because if you were to go ditch to ditch on this particular pace this morning, it would be a bit of a push. Whereas on this particular length, it's still touch. So maybe that's a tactic to, to sort of play some touch balls early on and to stretch their opponents out. So you, I won't be surprised if they do end, end up going longer on their opposition. So, Baz. I thought oh, Hong Kong China featured in one they, of those finals. They did. Okay. So it was... Tony Chung Tony, yes. finished, oh, finished runner-up in 2018. 2018, all right. Yep. To who? Mm. And Tony is actually in the next stream against Aaron Wilson. Yeah, I was just so about we'll to say, be, I just saw him downstairs We'll there, be covering so. him. So he f so he finished runner-up in 2017, or 2018, sorry, at St. John's Park. Yep. Now, what I'll do, Baz, I'll give you the nations of the winners. Right. So you got 2017... Wales, Laura Daniels. Yes. The women's winner was from New Zealand. In 18. Mm-hmm. Okay, New Zealand. In, oh, the, in the men? No, women. Women, sorry. Okay. And, and men, actually. New Zealand took a clean sweep that year. Okay, yep. All right, so there you go. I'm, I'm uh, battling a bit with that, but just leave it with me and we'll uh, right. come back to it, mate. And 2017's men was Australia. I'm... I'm as you can see, I'm clearly not um, Googling anything. 17 men was Australia. Yeah. Yep. Lovely shot from Christina, just 18 inches short, but uh, on a really good line there. And uh, good morning to our listeners from all around the world. We, uh, we touched on it yesterday, Val. It's just amazing to see where people tune in from. I saw Mexico yesterday. Yes. That's just amazing to see people out on their travels, people that are bowlers maybe traveling abroad or people that are tuning in that are bowlers from their home countries and it's just magnificent to see and for me um i i must admit i my mind really starts to wander because when i hear of some of these countries that are, are playing the game when we see here uh, and then we see some people tuning in to watch that are bowlers from those countries for me straight away i just love to see uh see their facilities and um see how they go about in their training and so on so much to learn and it makes me start to think, is there a bit of a, not a, maybe a podcast, but is there some way we can share that information visually? Um, About where we're watching. Yeah. Where people you know, are we, watching. We've, if, you know, if we could get, get some kind of database of, of you know, worldwide clubs. I and think you can in terms of the Facebook stats maybe afterwards possibly to see where people are watching. Imagine if we had one a one-stop shop hub for all the bowls clubs in the world and there was profiles and photos yep. and, you know, you could actually go there and look them up. and be unbelievable. It'd be brilliant. It'd it's absolutely be brilliant. You know? Yeah, International Bowls Link. There you go. Um, where you'd say, oh, all right, Malaysia. What's, what bowls clubs are uh, there in Malaysia? And there's photos and there's, you know, some, uh, some information. So for, to our people out there that if you're looking for a part-time unpaid job, <laughs> we've just given you one. <laughs> Baz will shout your copies. Good start from Ellen Ryan there as she pops one in. So Australia currently holding a collect here at the moment. Because I think the thing with that, Valley's too, you know, this day and age, especially now post-COVID, we've got people on cruises. We've got people out there traveling all How parts of the world. How many people are in Europe at the moment, Baz? And, and you know, and w where are the bowls clubs? You know, I'm sure there's a lot of bowls out there in their travels. Wouldn't mind calling into a bowls club if they knew exactly where they were and how they could access them. So, yeah. Jane Rigby just missing underneath. Yeah, you're right. And it's really interesting. I think a lot of bowlers might go over there and say, oh, you know what? Let's go have a roll on some different greens and some different conditions. Let's test ourselves. And obviously in England and... Scotland, it might be a bit easier with those famous clubs like Leamington Spa and and so on. But and 
Not even Potters, if you're an indoor fan. I know a lot of internationals come out to Australia and they see a bowls club and they're so readily accessible, especially in Melbourne, Baz, where you've lived. Um, you know, there's a bowls club in almost every suburb. And some, some suburbs have two. Yeah, and I think of places I've travelled and, and the clubs are just brilliant. You're like, I think of the, the bowling green inside the Happy Valley Racecourse at Hong Kong. Uh, it's so iconic. Um, here you are um, having a bowl and watching horses run by. Yep. Uh, and then the indoor bowling green, and shout out to Dorothy Yu and Vivian Yip there over at uh, Hong Kong. Uh, the indoor bowling green at Hong Kong, at, uh, at the Hong Kong Jockey Club there, you can actually s- sit by the bar and watch the horses run by through the glass. That's um, unreal. So it's, uh, it's very, very iconic, that is. And, and for those of you ever in Hong Kong, as we see Australia, Picking up a multiple here. This is four at least. So just just to be able to access the graphics of that, uh, how it looks, and bit, some profiling of clubs, um, I think I think there's a job out there for someone, Val. Certainly is. And Australia are doing the job at the moment. That's a four, and it's a seven-zero lead after three. They've started in ruthless fashion, have the Aussies. And uh, Nerida Blackford, we watched bowls on the iPad when we went to Antarctica earlier this year, and I bowled a rookie rollers bowl down there. Amazing experience. Now, Nerida, I'd love to have that footage if you've got it. Please, please send it. Actually, Lockie has just sent it through or told me that he does have it. So, we, yeah, the other that, one that too is, is amazing. Val. I was on Antarctica, a uh, as. I was on a P and O ship years ago. Um, filming the bowl show with Jack Heverin in Sydney in the harbour and it was a bowling green on the back of the P&O ship so it was only a one rinker but still um, great to see and just, just goes to show there's uh, you can put bowling greens anywhere and play anywhere yeah we could have a BPL in uh, Antarctica maybe Baz rookie rollers on the ice oh I prefer the heat mate <laughs> I prefer the heat hotter the better bowling in puffer jackets and gloves That'd be the great level, I reckon. Oh. I reckon even I might be a shot of winning that. I reckon you would have an, uh, a North Face puffer jacket. No, I don't. I've got oh, a cat- you're kidding me. I've got me. a Katmandu. Oh, you've got yeah. the Katmandu. Well, I've got the, one I've or the got, other, isn't it? I've gone the full Melbourne. I've got the uh, the Katmandu, the RM <laughs> Williams boots, the Com Games ones that they gave us last year. Oh, they yes, are, yes. They are the most... I've, I've never had a pair of RMs. and They are the most comfortable shoes well, the white the white shoes I wear still fairly often. The yeah, um, I've got those as well. Christina Christic, we're gonna. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna. I really want to chat about Christina's. Um, I really want to chat about Christina's technique. All right. When she steps to the mat for her next bowl, give us Coach Baz's insight. And tell us about what works for Chrissy. So Karen Sinclair, she's about to hop on the mat for. Her second delivery of the end. And just quickly, Zach Body sitting in post up ICU cheering on the Aussie gals again. Uh, we hope you're okay, Zach, and hope everything went well for you. Okay, so Christina Christic here shaping up again on the forehand. So some great fundamentals. Okay, we're going to see bend in the knees, just a slight bend in the knees, and a nice strong bend in the arm. <coughs> So what I really like about that, there's no overload anywhere, and I love the way Christina sets up. Alan sets up fairly similar as well. Great shot from Christina. I love the one where you set up her delivery. She goes right within a couple of centimetres of the jack, Baz. Yeah. It, it, for me, it, it's just getting those really four or five main key components um, you know, set up really nicely. So everyone's entitled to have their own delivery and that is completely fine there isn't one certain style or delivery that you should or shouldn't have but to every delivery there has to be some fundamentals and they are usually balance yep so you've got to always be in a balanced position and one thing that helps christina's balance is the fact that her feet are are fairly wide apart so everyone would know that the, the closer your feet are together the more susceptible you are to falling over now you see here with alan again Alan sets up. All right. See how far her feet are apart? That's creating stability. So, and w- what stability is, is of course balance. Yeah. Well, if your feet are too close or too far, you're not balanced, are you? That's right. So, not many sports that I can think of, e.g., snooker, darts, golf. Um, you can go on and on and on about so many sports where their feet are wide apart 
which creates that balance and stability. Yep. So it's great to see. So let's start from the ground up. So that's that massive box ticked. And how you want to position them in front of each other, that's up to you. But ideally have them at least, for me, the width of a jack. So if you're rolling up, put a jack between your feet. That's a good starting point to have for your balance. And then we see Alan, she has a really nice big bend in the knees there and then a bend in the arm. So, And look at the flow there. Yep. So the reason Alan can get the bowl away so nice and have that beautiful release and that beautiful flow and timing is because... Wow, almost seeing that ball. As we've got a little gecko just crawling past my feet, one of the little locals down there. We uh, we haven't we haven't seen a gecko yet. We've seen plenty of birds. The gecko, I can't, oh, there it is, little one. Um, yeah. So for for me, if you can start in a very structured and balanced and non uh, overloaded position, that just will create that beautiful setup and release. And uh, I I think Christina and Alan. Uh, much of their success has contributed their, to their beautiful setups and their beautiful techniques. I think you're right, Baz. You talk about the different releases and being at these world championships and being at um, being at the World Bowls indoors as well. You see a lot of the indoor bowlers go about their business and they're a little bit different in the way that they get the bowl out, but they're still balanced. And, you know, some of them, that the bowl doesn't actually hit the ground straight away. There's a little thud, um, but it still works. Yeah, and, and also the come of that too, you'll see when Christina and Alan and uh, release their bowl, they're not too horizontal. They're quite they're in a nice position, not overly vertical and not overly horizontal. So it's just trying to find that even space and then the position of the hand at release. So it's not vertical or horizontal, it's at you know, it's at that sort of forty five and uh, growing up I'm sort of modelling my delivery around certain players, Steve Glasson being one of them. Steve Glasson's hand at the point of release. I remember they used to zoom in on the TV games on the indoor and that, and I'd pause the screen and just look at the position of Steve's hand at the point of release, and it was just perfect. Um, and he got the bowl away so, so smooth. Yeah. And I modelled, you know, my delivery around a few of those players on, on looking at the, the consistent components to, to getting the bowl away well. So it's one to Australia. Sorry to cut you off there, Baz. No, Australia right. lead at 8-0. And, yeah, you're right. It's, it's so important to have a release point that, you know, just works and, you know, there are those fundamentals that you allude to and the, the Australians, they do get well drilled and it, it is great to see and a lot of people now, the, the next up-and-coming generation are modelling their release like you did on glass to that of Alan, Chris, That's right. and Lindsay. And Absolutely, yeah. Spot on, Val. Good call that because... Yeah, I was doing it with those players and then, you know, players coming through and now seeing these players feature a lot on TV and live streaming and and um, that information is, is it's it can be, if if uh, you've got a club coach, um, you know, reach out to your club coach and, and just make sure that yeah, you're getting a lot of those fundamentals right because these players here are, are giving you a free lesson. So as, as live streaming comes to, you know, so many places around the world now, you see these players... They're basically bringing you a, a free lesson to, the, to, to wherever you are. You're bringing a very free lesson to them here as well in terms of talking about their their lesson in, in their form and delivery, Baz. But do, do you have anybody that you've seen that's sort of modelled things around you? Because yours, not to make your head big, but yours is one of the nicer deliveries that you can see on the tour. Uh, I've had definitely some people reach out um, and sort of, yeah, maybe mention that they, they do like my delivery and um, <laughs> they struggle to exactly do what I do because they're not left-handed but uh um, so you've got to be a lefty that's okay. <laughs> but no I just straight away just say obviously thank you and I appreciate that um and but I don't claim to have a better delivery than anyone else I just really try and focus on the fundamentals and hopefully that puts me in good stead so um already for those that have maybe listened a fair bit this week you'll hear me talk about lateral movement that's that's for me the biggest killer in missing your line twisting your body left and right laterally um, so that's for me, keeping your sternum on your target, keeping your shoulders nice and square. <coughs> um, so if you, if you on YouTube, if you watch the Steve Glassons and Alex Marshalls and Cara Murphy's in that, you'll see that they all keep very square to their targets and, and don't swivel laterally too much. Um, so that's the lo a big component for line. And then for, for actual weight control is 
is momentum. So you know, the size of your step and how much body weight you're getting in behind it. So if you can get really f- those two key, key areas, line and length, sorted, um, you, you're definitely well on your way. Best in the business, Barry Lester. Australia currently holding sway 8 0 at the moment. Things are looking very good for Christina Christick and Alan Ryan. Yeah, dream head really, the way this is set up now. Um, scoreboard pressure is starting to kick in. Birds are chirping. Hardly a breath of wind. Flags aren't even moving. Um, and we're at the beautiful, beautiful club, Helensvale, um, with what used to be this small, small little shed many years ago, I've built into a mecca. And as we just look to our left there, Val, what a structure that is. Yep. Brand new roof here at uh, Club Helens Vale. And now they'll have the ability moving forward to play all year round bowls in all the elements. And not just the rain. One of the huge factors, important factors in playing an outdoor sport is getting out of the sun as well yeah. and protecting your skin. And what better way to protect your skin other than? Sparms. Get around it. Chloe Stewart doing a wonderful job there at Sparms. They're great partners here at Bowls Australia, and it is awesome. And you mentioned, you know, Helens Vale being a mecca of bowls, and so many bowlers now making the pilgrimage to come and play here or at least come and visit and making sure that they at least get to roll up on these famous greens that have now hosted a World Bowls Championships. Uh, this is a now a legacy bowling green. And Deborah Jones, Baz, will... Get to that comment after Alan's bowl yeah. finishes up here, which is finishing nice. a pretty good spot. Very good spot, yeah. For me, it's um, it's getting to the stage now where trying to play something by the book, the, the textbook shot may be gone now. I think for, well, that nearly worked, but I think now it's more of a crash and bash, try something different, maybe just try and rip into a head and try and get on the scoreboard here. Yeah, Australia have set up the Zimbabweans. This, head, this head really well. Zimbabwe do have the tee. They've got the backers bolt, as you can see, at a deep 7 o'clock. The Deborah Jones love listening to all your tips and tricks. I soak up everything you say. Use it on the green with my every bowl. Good coaching while watching some of the best players in the world. We're getting free lessons while sipping on our coffee. So great to have your company, Deborah, and we're glad that you're enjoying it. Baz is uh, providing some great insights here into the players, into their mindset as well as technique and what makes these players such formidable opponents when they're out here, not just at the World Bowls Championships, but when they play the Australian Open and state events as well, and you could play them at the Australian Open next year, June 8 to 21. Get your entries in when they open in December because you don't want to miss out on that opportunity to possibly play on these greens and also at Broad Beach as well and all of the other 10 clubs that host the glorious event that is the AO. Yeah, well said, Val. So many good events out there for what I love is for players of all levels. And as we see more and more, we have to see the paradisciplines this week. You've got junior programs, club-based programs, over 60s, you name it. So the bolt for me, when I started working at Bowls Australia back in 2010, or even through to now, the amount of initiatives that just keep piling in and to create a better opportunity for everyone out there has been incredible. We look at bowling arm championships, para championships. So it's just a, a great sport, so inclusive, and uh, we can't encourage enough people that are already players to tell your friends, grab a group of friends or grab one friend and just take them down to your club and they will be hooked because the sport and the product of bowls, rolling that bowl down, is such a great, enjoyable thing to do. 100%. So, Australia, that is another three. They are steamrolling ahead. And this is the ruthless nature that they need. After a loss, they need to ensure that their shot difference is quite high. A big match against the English later on today. Amy Farrow and Sophie Tolchard, the rematch of that classic contest in the Commonwealth Games final. We had the privilege, all three of us sitting at this desk, Locke included, had the uh, privilege of being there in Birmingham that day. And that was... The, one of the more wonderful sporting events and matches that I've been to. And I've seen Grand Slam finals, I've seen AFL Grand Finals, but that one, that was something special, being so invested in these people and you know, being there with the Australian team was was remarkable, Baz. 
How many AFL grand finals have you actually been to, Val? Just the two. Yeah, I've only and been to one and it, oh, memories forever, mate. Yeah, so Which one did you go to? 16. 16. Oh, very nice. Um, I thought still to this day one of the best uh, games I've ever seen was the, when the Bulldogs beat GWS uh, at GWS and they oh, took up bus the loads prelim. and... And that's where uh, that's where the, you know that culture, the Bloods. Uh, well, I guess they're a form of the Bloods culture down there at the Western Bulldogs. But their culture was uh, phenomenal, still is. But yeah, to come away with that win that day, I was with some really good mates, um, with uh, Shane Fordham and Mark Casey, Mark Casey's mum. She was. Uh, I saw her yesterday actually at Musgrave Hill oh, watching. Nice. So shout out to Case and his mum Lynn. Um, yeah, what a day that was. Yep. Just to think, though, it, you know, 100,000 people. You know, I, I still can't uh, get over that sometimes when you're at the MCG. But what uh, what GFs you went to? Uh, 17 and 19. So okay. I got to see Richmond's two flags in Melbourne. Um, oh, so, okay, yeah. Yeah, been you're to... unfortunate then, so. Been to every... Uh, every well, most of the Richmond finals in Melbourne that we played. The GWS one in 2017, the prelim. Uh, the, the roar when Kane Lambert kicked that opening goal and there was 90,000 Richmond fans there and 4,000 Giants fans. Uh, it was pretty special. Yeah, good bowling here from yep. both players. Really good start here. So Sinclair and Christic, good little battle here on the sixth end. Christina playing one of her first or and only bowls on her back end in this direction. As we see with Christina, really exemplifies leading very well in terms of Early on in a game, just trying to catch some rhythm, turning over and promoting her own bowl into a perfect position. And uh, it doesn't get much better than that. Two on it, switch over backhand, start on a new line, new hand, and turn that bowl into a great location. So uh, you can't really ask for a better head the way this is shaping up already. Joe Franzi echoing those uh, supports about the Australian Open. Highly recommend entering the AO no matter where you are. In your bowls journey, he's in his fourth year of bowls and has got better every year. Won his section this year at the AO and had a stream game called by us on Ringside Life. And do remember that. He got the win as well. Singles game certainly fast track your improvement and he'll definitely be back. And then Robert Grunewagen asking, Baz, always curious about whether your eyes are at an aiming point or up, to, or up at the target upon delivery. What do you do? Um, well... I'll get back to that because that's very extensive, and I will try to keep it quite short. I don't want to, um, <laughs> I don't want to bore you with all my coaching tips, but, um, but great question. I will answer that at the end of this end. Um, as we just focus in on here, Alan Ryan, she's got a tricky little head because, yeah, well, you know what, she's pleased. onto it already. So I was just about to say that <laughs> Zimbabwe have yeah. those two red balls there, Alan Ryan, and this is the maturity I'm seeing with Alan Ryan. So. You go back three or four years ago, trying to make her way into the team, you know, trying to break into a five-a-side in the Jackaroos environment is very hard to do. Alan Ryan, her resume speaks for itself, but it's just trying, there's one thing trying to break in, but then when you do break in, it's having the feeling and sense that you really do belong, and I see that with Alan. I really do, and, and it probably has a fair bit to do with her accomplishments over there at Birmingham last year, but I'm also just seeing that from how she is positioned in her life, where what she's doing for work, and just how she is just maturing all the time as that goes into a good spot. So, and getting Alan, married in December as getting well. Getting married and just all those little life um, changes. I just have this sense of great maturity out there and great rink presence and, and leadership from Alan. And that's what I'm really loving about Alan Ryan right now. And whether it comes in the way of a gold medal or it comes in the, in the way of a fifth place, for me is totally irrelevant. As we see a great shot there. For me, it's just the way she's really being a, a mature jackaroo out there and, and just leading her friend Chrissy into these battles. And and it's a great sign. And just the way, you know, has she chased after that second bowl. And so really good signs for Alan. And um, I'm sure that she'll get many, many more rewards coming in the way of gold medals in, in many years to come. And, of course, hopefully a couple of more BPL titles with me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, BPL 18 coming your way in the second week of November at Club Pine Rivers, the tournament's spiritual home. Barry Lester will be back with Gary Kelly and Alan Ryan and Jeremy Henry as the coach. Great shot, Alan Ryan. What a head of bowls, Val. This is, this is sensational. Nothing outside of the two-metre mark. Well, maybe I, the one-metre mark, Barry. You could, you could literally chuck a 
blanket over that. It's just amazing. This this I know the conditions are perfect, but that is an unbelievable head of bowls. It is so. Zimbabwe have every bowl inside three feet of, of the jack. There, it's incredible. And the Aussies head. get a second. They are steamrolling ahead here. Thirteen zero, and it's been a clinical start. That was a really good. Good head from both teams, but Australia still managed to come out with the multiple. And Alan played game 150 for the uh, Jackaroos yesterday against Malta. Unfortunately, they couldn't celebrate with a win, but already at such a young age, she's ticked over that 150 mark and playing so well. She's accomplished a lot in that time. But yeah, looking forward to the Bowls Premier League. Now, stay tuned next week. Because we are going to, or maybe the week after, we haven't quite decided yet, but we are going to be announcing those teams. Of course, we're not going to do it during the... Uh, Ooh, during you the, sound like you got a bit of a surprise for us, Val. Oh, there's some news. There's some news. Ooh, there's a couple of changes. Not too many. just pricked up a little. But there's a couple of changes, and we will be announcing those in the next couple of weeks. But obviously didn't want to do it when the World Championships was on, because it would get very, absolutely dead and buried. Very true. But... Stay tuned because the announcements are coming. We all we all love the BPL. Very very excited. Okay, where do your eyes look when releasing a bowl? Now, where my eyes look um, is up on the bank um, or beyond. Sometimes, depending what my target is. Um, so I basically find the widest point for my line, which may be. I put a number on it, say five or six or seven feet wide, as we've spoken about a lot, Val, with the, the drawing of these greens. As you can see, these, these greens are, this morning are drawing around about five feet. Chrissy, nice shot. Um, so I look at the five foot mark halfway up the green and then I find a line in, in line with that on the bank, so a marker. And my job is just to get the bowl out to its widest point. That's my first job to get my line. Uh, and that... For me, it's just easiest if I look at the bank and find a spot. So it might be a, it might be a random thing. It might be a scoreboard. It could be anything. Uh, it might be something well and truly be beyond the green, as David Bryant has famously spoken about. He might have, beyond the green. He might have looked 20, 30, 40, 50 feet beyond the green and found a target. And what happens there? Once you're fixated on a point, your concentration levels need to be so high to be fixated on that point. Really doesn't let any other anything creep into your sight. But there's a catch to that. <clears throat> you might be someone that isn't very good in using their peripheral vision. And that is a peripheral action. So delivering the bowl by looking at something, say, up on the bank, you're not looking at the release point of your bowl out of your hand. So it's not easy to do, and it has to be something trained, but something that you're comfortable with. And you're, if you're not comfortable with it, I don't recommend you do it. So the next best thing is do you find you bring your way from the bank down onto the green and find somewhere you are comfortable and then fixate on that. So that's the best I can explain it. So it is horses for courses. It's not something I tell people to do, but if they are comfortable in doing it, um, they can give it a go because using your peripheral vision when delivering a bowl, uh, it's like kicking a football. Some people like to kick the football, watch the ball under their foot. Some people like to look up at the target they're kicking at. So it comes back to what's comfortable for you. Um, so that's the best I can explain it there, Val. But me personally, and I know a lot of other players um, you know, around the Australian environment, international players, you'll see in photos and, and videos that their eyes are well and truly ab above their target, up on the bank or beyond the green at the release point. Coach Baz has kept Ann Norton away from her housework. Oh, well, there goes the housework again. Can't seem to drag myself away from these awesome bowls games. And, of course, Barry Lester just giving us insight after insight. So Zimbabwe currently holding one here, looking to get themselves on the board. We're on N7, and Australia lead at 13-0. They have been clinical here. The Commonwealth Games winning pair of Christina Christick and Alan Ryan, Western Australia and New South Wales. The honorary mayor of Goulburn, Alan Ryan, got the keys to the city last year after that Com Games win. Alan Ryan, well, that'll do for me. Well, it is close, but I think that'll do. Very oh. close. It's a hard one to pick. From where we are, I favour Australia, but the camera vision probably shows that it's more so Zimbabwe, which is big for them here. Any prom promotion here. 
or did that rocket up or slide it up enough? There's a little bit of movement there. One each to come for both Alan and Jane. So Alan Ryan just needs to, could even just sit on her own, rock it up. Try and wrestle this shot. Zimbabwe, they'll just want to get on the board and give themselves some sort of a foothold on this match. Of course, later on today, Tolchard and Farrow against Christic and Ryan, the rematch. Alan Ryan. She's not far away here, Barry, but she, I think she's going to drop under. Well, she flops off that wing. Well, not quite. So, good weight. That bowl got down a little bit harder than I thought it would. So, nice strong turn there from the Australian and, on the forehand. And Barry, the Ricksons. Connie. Sorry, sorry, Val. Just, oh. I just, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was interested to see if Zimbabwe were like, we got one, let's take it. And that's what they've just done. Yeah. So. No, nah, they were well and truly uh, aware of what they had there and didn't want to disrupt anything. <laughs> no, or, no. Or knock their own run. Yep, knock Alan Ryan's bowl up. Might as well just get on the board, take that first shot. So Zimbabwe on the board for the first time. 13-1 in favour of Christic and Ryan. And across the greens, well, Farrow and Tolshar taking on Rickson and Rickson. Well, the Maltese Ricksons, they are leading 5-3. They beat Australia 19-10. And the Rickson sisters, well... Would they beat both of the Commonwealth Games finalists from last year? That would be truly something. Yeah, big bowling family, the Rickson family, all all members of the family playing bowls, mum and dad. Of course, mum and the two sisters picking up a medal at the 218 Com Games. Yes, so Rose, Connie and Rebecca. So very, very good bowlers and all from Queensland. So they know these greens like the back of their hands and saw... Rebecca Rickson make an Australian Open semi-final last year with Jesse Cattell losing to uh, Olivia Bloomfield and Paris Baker in that semi. So uh, I went home last night, Val, yep. and um, <clears throat> I was actually pretty disappointed that uh, I didn't come through with the goods on one of our trivia questions yesterday. Oh, no. You yeah, didn't? The, so the sisters or the brother and the yeah, siblings? Yeah, the brother and the, the siblings. Um and, and it's it's been right in front of us this event, and I'm really sorry to to miss. Uh, well, I'll, I won't actually tell you. I'll let you sort of guess. But Scotland, of course. Scotland. Yes, uh, they have a, a a brother sister duo at the moment in the men's and women's team. Hmm. So yeah, it was that was the same with me. I, I oh, went Carla, up. Carla, and Jason Banks. That's correct. So uh, yeah, it sort of eluded me yesterday. I knew. Probably the reason why I asked that trivia question is because I probably felt there was an answer to it. So, um, well, I I wouldn't because Banks is such a common last name, so you never know. And for Jason, he's really you know he's really debuting for Scotland in a way too, you know, at a major. So, um, so Carla's been around, Carly's been around for a while, but yeah. So there you go. It's just how good is that? Our brother and sister playing for their respective disciplines. Great and to see Tolchards, the Banks, that's right, the Ricksons. Plenty Great. of uh, siblings playing at the highest level. As Christina Christie gets the jack and takes it through and follows it in as well to land within about a hand of that jack. Well, going by that uh, comment from Carly Mitchell, she needs to invest in a waterproof TV in a shower by the sounds of that, Bell. <laughs> Carly, know the feeling watching while peeping through the shower door. Well, hopefully you're not running the water bill out. Just get in, get out, and then uh, watch some more bowls because we are on all day. Aaron Wilson coming up next against Tony Chung of Hong Kong, China. Yeah, when spoke to Aaron this morning, he's uh, he's ver looking very, very determined. You know, it's um, it's very rare air that Aaron is um, attempting. Very rare. Well, so. It's, and we know how hard it is to do. Only Margaret Johnston and David Bryant have done the Commonwealth and World Bowls Championship singles double. Uh, Aaron Wilson looking to become the third. Alan Ryan got within two wins of it. Lost to Taylor Bruce in the semifinals. Was quite close, but then Taylor Bruce on green one right here at Helensvale. 
got the jump and then beat Kelly McCarrahan in the final. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Steve Glasson, 2004 men's world champion singles gold medalist uh, against Alex Marshall in yep. Air Scotland. And did Steve get bronze in Manchester in the singles? I think he might have. He did get a bronze, I reckon. So I reckon up until... Up until uh, well, Alan well, Alan got bronze as well, so they'd be they'd be equal, wouldn't they? They'd be right up there. So yeah, Steve so. Glasson at the Commonwealth Games went to no, he didn't. He did not. I don't think he did get a medal. Very oh, very. I think yet. let's have a look. I think Glass might have played for for uh, for bronze in two oh two or or very close to it, um, but. That that singles that singles win for for Alex Marshall, uh, sorry for Steve Glasson against Alex Marshall uh, at Air in Scotland, uh, two thousand and four. Well, if there's ever a game you'd love to sit down and watch, I have sent, watched that game quite a few times. Um, it, it sends chills up your spine. Um, what an amazing win! Not only to to win the world outdoor singles, but to do it in front of uh, a Scottish crowd. Uh, against you know the great Alex Marshall, of uh, it's pretty. I don't have it on DVD. I've, I, I've definitely. I'm pretty sure I got it on VHS, which I've got to actually go back and convert a lot of them. Val, it makes me feel old, but to my old VHS videos, I've got to get them converted and maybe even try and put them online somewhere. But that game there, um, wow, what a match! 2004 and Michael Wilkes there. He was there playing, and he had. Um, he had a few of his supporters there, and um, great Kelvin Kirk and a few others. So that that win there really was uh, an outbreaking win. And Glass was so close to, the, to four years before that in in Johannesburg. And so shout out to Steve Glass and um, of course former Jackaroo coach, um, leading in was part of the part of the World Championships leading into twenty twenty, uh, and then. Stepped away and Gary Willis took over. So, Glass, well done to all your work you've put into setting up, you know, the teams and yep. contributing to the Jackaroos program uh, to see that these athletes out here we're witnessing now. Definitely, you definitely had a big role to play in helping them be where they are today. Well, he's the coach of a lot of them and Barry Karen Murphy got within a couple of shots of that Com Games World Championship double. And we'll get a score confirmation here, but that is another two to the Aussies who moved to a 15-1 buffer, but Karen Murphy in 2002 yeah, silver, in Manchester. Well. Yep. 21-19 to Ziti Salina Ahmed. And that, that, is, that was a, another big win um, for the for Australia, I guess, with Karen winning the silver there. Massive effort to to take um, to take Lena all the way there. And, um, and then, of course, Karen turned it Turned it around in, in 12, got the double, 12 and 16, the uh, Outdoor World Singles Champions. She was the reigning champion for 11 years. Yeah, incredible. Great starter, Chrissy. So Australia really travelling well here. It's, um like, as I mentioned at the start, right off the top, beautiful conditions, flags only just starting to move a little bit now, but down here at ground level, hardly a breath beautiful isn't it it is you know just a little bit of moisture in the green uh, so bowls are sitting down nicely and the flags that we are looking at canada new zealand australia england four of the gold medal winning nations from the weekend i think the only four canada oh sorry canada didn't get one but new zealand australia england absolutely flying so christina here that's really good so that there is, some may say, well, that's a bit of a wayward bowl, but that's almost perfect. So, so many things have been achieved out of that bowl from Christina. Yes, it would be nice to come down and sit the bowl or pick the jack up clean, but the fact that she's played really neat weight, she's played about six feet of weight, Alan Ryan looks at that head now and goes, well, I've just got everything going for me. I've got a target to run into, but I've got the luxury that I've got a bowl there waiting for me. So... Three bowl pairs, as much as you want to smother the jack all day long, you have no future at all in trying to perfect it and falling short because Alan Ryan, she'll be confident playing this shot because the heads remained open for her. And so well done to Christina. Not only is she playing well, but she's playing the correct weight when asked to see Alan just standing a yard behind the head. And look at this weight control. Perfect weight. 
Turn the bowl up. Christina Christic. Phenomenal leading and great, great weight control from a lead. And and that's where, you know, a big part of leading is important, your weight control also, to be able to know that, yes, you've got to get close, but when asked, like Alan said, to play a yard of weight, you can play it and there you get the results. These two, such good friends. The narrative of that com game is just remarkable. They never thought they'd be able to play pairs together at a com games, let alone win it together. And look at what they've done. The best friends from the other sides of the country, Goulburn and Perth. It's an unlikely one, but it is one that you can't help but smile at when they're, when they're at a tournament together. They are often inseparable when they're playing against each other at a BPL. They're sitting next to each other. Yeah, and what a journey. I actually uh, made up a, a little video for the girls, uh, having known the girls for quite a while now, seeing them come up through the ranks. I, I grabbed about, because um, oh, I had a lot of footage from the Com Games, obviously being rinkside, and put a little timeline video with some music and that over the top for them, and they absolutely loved it. And it went right back as far as I could ever remember seeing them play together, which goes way back so many years ago. And just to see the timeline of achievements and, and some setbacks. There were some events there where they they couldn't quite get the job done in some finals and so on. And just to see the journey that they went on from um, domestic level here in Australia to international level. And um, for me, that's probably the, the best part of it. When you see a pair like that achieve the, the, the highest heights, knowing what the journey looked like for, you know, all those previous years and, and there were some there were some disappointments and and some setbacks, but you know, all in the end, you just keep believing in one another, keep enjoying each other's company, and anything is possible. What a shot, Alan Ryan! She's locked in this morning, is Alan Ryan, and look at where that bowl has ended up as well. There's a little target there for Jane Rigby to hit, but the Australians they have been rampant this morning, absolutely rampant. Malta and England at 5 all. The Rixons against Tolchard and Faro. Not a bad effort here from Jane Rigby, though. I reckon still down two. But very good effort. That's just showing us the video here of the two of them and what they've achieved and them together at the opening ceremony. Yeah, so I just want to give you a little bit of an insight to the athletes here. So Alan and Christina living opposite sides of the country, staying well connected as good mates, playing in Australian Opens together. And look at this for a shot. That is just class. She's yeah. just so good. Uh, just p perfect touch, but just backing the, the line there, that nice arcing draw hand so yeah living on opposite sides of the country but um yeah just when they can as we see both partners walk in the door together so there's another example of how tight they are as a pair marcus and mac marcus and mac walking into the complex here at club helensville and welcome to them and both would be taking time off work and uh, obviously traveling up to the gold coast to support their partners so and look at them. They look so happy to be here. And uh, they would have formed a great relationship as, as friends as well. That's uh, great to see. So that's another multiple to the Australians. I reckon that was a three there. No, that was a four. So it is 19 to one after nine. We are halfway through this. And the Australians, well, they have zipped away. And look at the replay here. Alan Ryan arcing it in yeah. to perfection. Yeah, she played that bowl earlier, remember Val, that really yep. ripped across the screen. And, Understanding uh, the green, the qualities yeah. of the green. Ah, spot on. And, um, yeah, just gave it a bit more height and let it work in and got the reward. So reading the rink, your, your rink management, knowing what, what parts are turning more and so on. So, And that's this beautiful green again, once again, at Helens Vale. Green three up the top here. Now, they do something here that I've never seen at any other bowls club. Val. What do they do? The golf cart that picks you up from your car and takes yeah. you to reception. It's pretty awesome. Now, did you you didn't, did you? Did you get in? <laughs> oh, I have done. I remember when I first saw it here Come back on, at the Mads. Asia Pacific Games in 2019, I actually grabbed it from the van uh, up in the car park there down to reception. Um, 
just made a bit of a fun a bit of fun about it. But yeah, we we almost did when when Locke and I got here. Matt Lucas offered to <laughs> get us in there, and then uh, the key wasn't in, so we ended up walking. But but what I want to touch on is is you know how good is that from the club to say all right, we're going to invest in buying a you know I'm sure it's not cheap, but no, we're going to invest in buying a I reckon it'd probably seat maybe six people, uh, a little golf. Um, golf c- uh, cart with the overcover because of the rain and so on, and um, we're going to pick you up from your car and uh, and drive you down to reception. So what a great little initiative! I do lie though, actually, I did experience it recently at Warula. We uh, we arrived at Warula recently in it for an event, and um, they they take you to your cabin at the back um, if there's if the weather's bad. So there you go. But no, nah, it's something you don't see very often, is it? A golf cart taking you from your car to reception. No, not at all. And it's a great initiative here from the uh, Club Helens Vale hierarchy to get one of those in as Chrissy looks to pop in her third here. Currently got one right behind the jack and spoke to Chrissy on the right line before the uh, World Championships, Baz. And I asked her who she says good morning to first, whether it was Marcus or Ellen. But tends to be Marcus because he leaves early in the morning. But if it was uh, if it was line ball, Alan is the first person that she messages. Right, there you go. So that's how close those two are. And I think Alan probably says good morning to Chrissy before Mac. So that's how close these two are. Yeah, it's it's great to see, you know, it's um that's what the sport's all about. You know, we, we heard from Alan Faulkner the other day saying that Amy was representing England and Amy, you know, is her best friend and she's the godmother of, of her child and, and, and all that. So that's where friendships in sport can go and they can last forever and you make these memories up along the way. And, yeah, I uh, I must admit I've made some amazing friends out of the game and the hardest thing is not being able to see them all the time. So you try to catch up where you can. I'm a big one for re- reunions, to be fair, yep. uh, just like football. I think if you... I encourage, especially anyone out there listening, if you've won something, even if it's a club pairs, uh, club event, uh, pennant event, anything you can um, try and get set out to achieve with your, your teammates, your club mates, try and get together 12 months later. Um, it's just a great way to to find a way to, to catch up and, and share in some memories and share uh, talk about the good times. And um, always a big one of um, trying to do that and... And I think they, those reunions, they always look like they're having fun, especially those AFL boys. They, yeah. You see them 10 years later after winning a flag and they uh, they all get together and, and, you know, they bring their wives and families along and, and all stay connected. It's just great to see and I'm a big one for that. Um, yep. And I'm, which I'm sure, you know, you look at the men's triples the other day, Aaron and Corey and Carl, for an example, as Alan draws another one. You know, in 10 years' time, no matter where their life has, has taken them and where they may be, I'm sure they'd all love to sit around one day and have a lunch and, and talk about the, the good times they experienced here on the greens at, on the Gold Coast during these world champs. Maybe just head back to Helensvale, get a palmer. And That's right. It, it is a palmer, isn't it? Well, coming from two Victorians, yes. But I think we're, we're well and truly outnumbered, however. Yeah, we're in palmy we, territory up here. We mate. are, but we disregard it anyway. Because you don't say palmy jana. No. Say Parmajana. Yes, yes, that's right, Val. We've got to uh, make so, sure that we keep that tradition alive. Exactly. Can't beat the old chicken parma. It's funny, when I, uh, I've travelled overseas sometimes, I've actually went and saw the chef and said, can he or she make me a chicken parma? I, I do sort of miss my chicken parma when overseas for a certain amount of time. Yeah, I did last year at the, uh, at the Com Games and then afterwards I had a... They had a veal parmigiana at a um, at a restaurant I went to in London, but I didn't realise that that everywhere else they put eggplant on it. No, that's a big, big no. And you you don't do that. Not at all. So Alan Ryan just turning her back on that one, She's just falling short. So we're just just seeing the score line here. If you if we took the score down off this screen, um, there's no way we where I think. The viewers would say that there's an 18 shot deficit here. No, the ha- heads have been so congested. The Aussies have just been locked in. Their line and length have been magnificent. And, and look at this, for example. This is what I'm trying to get to here. But look at this for a shot. You know what I mean? Like three down to one up. What a shot 
from uh, the skipper there. Jane Rigby getting the job done. They are going to measure here, though. Trav Nortia signing out from Zimbabwe, 1.30 a.m. here. Good night to you. We might see you in a few hours' time. Let's see. <laughs> and that is one to Zimbabwe. So yeah. they are back on the board. Another end for them. And Australia, they are... Well, it was a multiple for Zimbabwe. 19-3 to three for Australia. They have only lost two ends so far of the 10 that we've played. They've been ruthless. And it's actually funny. Jane Rigby was joking with Chrissy this morning. It's, can you take it easy on a couple of seniors? And I looked over and I said, oh, Chris, Chrissy is pretty ruthless. And the Aussies, well... They have just not let up. They've been awesome today. Zimbabwe have not gone badly at all. Anton, I know it is spelt uh, like that, and I am Italian, but you don't say Parmigiana. Don't think so, anyway. Don't think I've ever heard my nonno say it like that. Yeah, I'm... I'm a big fan of Italian food, mm. Val. I've Mario's got, in Broadbeach, Baz. Have you frequented it? I have. I have, but I, I'm sorry. I have to be very biased. Um, my friend, Melinda Aloisi, she, growing up in Gippsland, Victoria, she owns and runs with her beautiful partner, Wani, two Italian restaurants in Melbourne, Miss Frankie in Ligon Street and in Cremorne, Richmond. And if you're ever in the area... Check out Miss Frankie. You can actually watch the food being handmade behind the glass kitchen window there. Pure homemade Italian food. You cannot, for me, I, I just can't beat it. Yeah, it's... I'm not a spicy man. So no, neither am I. So I'm Italian lemon and really <laughs> type spice. So, um, geez, all this food talk. We've got to stop, mate. Where It's too, uh, yeah. too early for that. I've but, not um, eaten. My, I've only had the coffee this morning, so I'm pretty hungry myself. Um, so... Karen Sinclair, beautiful weight there, just missing under. But um, two really nice shots in the area there. But, um, yeah, I do definitely love my Italian. Get some really nice fresh homemade meatballs. Well, that's – I'm done. Put yep. a fork in me. Christina Christic. Yeah, that's just rhythm there. That's just beautiful bowling. Pairing them up like that. Same line, beautiful weight. See, the one for me is the the difference between sort of an, a, a traditional Italian pizza, the thin, or just do you want a dirty pizza with its thick crust, you know, thick base. I'm more of the, you know, the backstreet pizza place. Right. You know, okay. just a normal pizza place. There's one near my place called Albion Pizza, and it is absolutely magnificent in Brunswick West. Would uh, would highly, highly recommend if you're ever in Melbourne. They are not paying me to say that, I can guarantee. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. We, um, you know, I guess we've got a lot of people tuning in from various places, I'm sure. They'd love to, as we sit, Christina, around the front. Careful now. Well, does it get any better than that? Not really. Reward for consistency there. And that's what the game's all about. If you train hard, practice hard, work on your skills to be a consistent performer, most times, you will get rewarded. As we see here, th three bowls right down the same line. It's just a matter of getting back for the jack now. That's perfect leading. Look at those three bowls, all in identical positions. Perfect weight control, perfect line for three consecutive deliveries. Interesting release for Jane Rigby, Baz, putting the bowl sort of on the ground. If you watch the... 45 next time she heads up, just gets on her knees, pops it on the ground with both hands, and then gets into the release. It's something different, but as you said before, everyone has something a little different, but if it works for you, then it doesn't matter. But but all the foundations are there. That's yeah, right, Val. Exactly. You know, so at, 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 right through all that, it's balanced. Yep. You know, it's 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 in line with the target. It's you know, the, the tempo's there. You know, David Bryant, the greatest player of all time, had one of the most unique deliveries mm. of all time, and so that just don't you can't look any further. So it's very similar to David Bryant set up, bend of the knees, nice and low, bowl on the ground. Yeah. Any difference is he he had a uh, well as we see here is this going to hold on? Might just drop under. 
Oh. Or does it crash well, into the Well, I was just front? waiting for that bell. And, yeah. Oh. So a little bit of a re- lucky result there for the Zimbabweans, but they will take it. And Baz, yeah, and you look at... He had top. a pipe in his mouth. I was just getting yeah. to that, yeah. So <laughs> David Bryan always had a pipe in his mouth when he played. And you also, you, know, you look at other sports in tennis, Roger Federer, so quick at the, at the baseline to serve. A couple of bounces, serve, done very quick. Rafa, on the other hand, adjusts the hair as Alan Ryan crashes in and... Cuts it down from a couple down. Might still just be. No, that's just one at the moment. Yeah, great stroke there from Alan on the forehand. Looking to get the jack back or open the head up. She's done that. She's reduced the count and now giving herself a pretty good opportunity with her last bowl. That bowl sitting jack high. Looks like she has two seconds and they're both fairly hidden. But yeah. I think... I think just with the, we'll see what happens here, Val. But she's not far off. Here is Jane Rigby, just whisking past, but she's got the T now. Yeah, so I just want to really look at this shot from a direction point of view. So the the objective here is to get the ball out of the head because they they don't want to get the jack because they lose the T. Yeah. So you see Christina directing Alan there. So the reason this has to be backhand is because you're playing away from your bowls. Now, if Alan plays forehand, she plays towards her own bowls and can remove her own bowls out of the head. The reason it's backhand is because she's playing away from her own bowls. And if she plays away, that she's just missing high there. That takes away any danger of taking her bowls out. So the first objective to when playing away to shot is picking the hand and then picking the weight and off you go. Brilliantly done from Zimbabwe there to... Wrestle that back. A little bit lucky at times, but they got it done, and that's all you need to do. But, yeah, and you, you talk about different deliveries. It's the same in serves here. Roger, very quick. Raffa, on the other hand, has to adjust the hair, pick his undies, and take a few bounces with the racket, then with his hands before he actually gets into his motion. Carla Pizzi, good morning to you. And the england Malta game. Malta, well, they're leading 7-5 of the Rickson sisters. That's... Halfway through, after nine ends, Rickson and Rickson leading Tolchard and Faro. 7-5. They are playing very well. David and Heather, I remember watching a young slip of a girl rolling bowls down the greens at Goulburn Railway Club back in around 2010. Never gave a thought that I was watching a Blooming Com Games slash World Champion. She hasn't won one yet. She's won a Com Games, learning her trade. She'll be looking to win a world championship here. Two ends in a row for Zimbabwe. 19 to 4 is the lead. Australia raced down to a 13 zip lead. Had some really intriguing games throughout this tournament so far, and I think Australia-France last week was really interesting. Yesterday's men's singles match between Sam Tolchard and uh, and Ulla Bakren of Sweden. We actually afterwards went back to Broadbeach and were chatting with some of the other staff members um, up here on the Gold Coast, Bass, and a lot of people, and plus the ITOs, a lot of people took a lot of interest in it and watched it and said that it was actually quite an intriguing game because Tolchard... Sam Tolchard looked like he was going to run away with it, but Ulla Bakran continued to fight and actually sort of won the count after going back 12-0. Yeah, I, I did something similar. I spoke to a couple of players when I went back to the club as well, Val, and, um, yeah, they all they all uh, rated him and just said, you know, he, he's got that knack of being able to, you know, convert and, and hang around and, you know, sort of scare opponents. So so well done to him. Um but, yeah, it was, it was also a great example for Sam, someone that's heavily favourite to win the game, to just to stay patient, keep his wares, and, and know that, you know, consistency will always sort of show out in the end. Um, as we see, pretty much the longest end of this match so far. Chrissy's still just nailing that line, not quite nailing the jack, but that's okay. Just feeling out the new length, beautiful line. Chrissy's technique is so sound at the moment. Just watching it side on, especially really looking um, match fit, I would probably put it, as we see the result here. Just falling slightly short, but all over the line. So that's where the players are at now. As we see, you know, the, the, the head's nice and tight today, but they're just in their groove into their rhythm now, and and uh, players really 
setting up with their prep and their and their recovery to to make sure that day in day out they can keep getting it done. It was of course Chrissy's front hop up in that fours match against Scotland in the semi finals in the extra end that got the job done. The other three, Lindsay was saying, we just didn't want to get near it. After that, protected Jack and Chrissy was one of the main reasons that they got through in the end to the final. Unfortunately, it was the England quartet that got the job done from an Australian point of view, but a great story to see England and Chris Dick against Pharaoh and Tolshard in another final. This time it was England that got the uh, got the chocolates. Yeah, and um, those two draw shots from Kelsey Cottrell on the last end to the ditch. Green was quick. Oh, yeah. You've got a massive crowd. You've got... Um, that well, crowd was like a fifth member. It was. And, and sometimes, you know, sometimes you can le- use the externals for, uh, you know, to, to to back you up or you can use them to, against you. And that particular day, like you say, there was oh, at least two or 300 people there crowded around that particular rink. And when Kelsey drew that second shot to the, around that sort of four to five foot mark to, to get to, uh, to pick up a three to go to an extra end. Yeah, what a great atmosphere. You can't. You probably, as much as you want to try and play, yes, at the the highest level and you want to play the big games, but from an atmosphere point of view, it probably doesn't really get much better than that. You know, nice, warm, sunny afternoon, Broad Beach Bowls Club, World Championships, big crowds, and they're all cheering you on. So um, the Aussies come away with a massive win there in that semi, and and, uh, and what a great final it was. England took on Australia, as we see... Almost Australia losing the shot there, but hanging on. See, England have taken the lead against Malta, scoring a three in the previous end. They lead it 8-7 after 10. So that one is one that we'll watch with fade of breath to see what happens there because the Rixons, if they can get the job done, they might be a front runner to possibly through to a quarter-final here. To get through to the knockout stages, Australia currently leading here, 19-4. to four. This one, the result looks fader complete. Yeah, it's, a, it's trying to cash in on, on, the, on the surplus here, Val. So just trying to get as many shots up as possible. As you see here, yes, it's a nice one to Australia, and you, know, you could just try and draw another for two, but... There is an opportunity to sit the nearest bowl of Zimbabwe out to make four or five or trail the jack for four or five. And Alan Ryan, just indicating with Christina, she's going to come down on the back end here and just try and trail the jack. Bowl jack would be the perfect result. Is he going to get back in time? She's trying hard, Alan Ryan. It's turning hard now. Just wants some jack movement. Well, Almost. Just, just draw another. How on earth? Another. How on earth? She find that gap without touching the jack. That's unbelievable. But another one, the Aussies, and I reckon that'll be two, I believe. We'll uh, find out when the when our scoreboard attendant marks it down. That is a two. So twenty-one to four is the Australian lead, and a really important one for the Aussies as well. Because when you look at the shot difference for the Australians, they're plus nine. England plus thirty-six. So Australia as they look to chase that down and get themselves a healthy shot difference. Well, uh, this will go a long way because a live shot score for 26. What about pineapple on pizza, Val? See, I'm one... I'm, it's, a, it's a no for me. I'm a weird one. So I'll get a Hawaiian. I'll pick the pineapple off. Oh, so okay. So sometimes the little extract of pineapple is not too bad, but I don't like the full Oh, on you've gone there. Okay. So I know what you mean, but yeah, but right. yeah, generally just a... My pizza, I love it. Pepperoni with ham. Okay. Or a meat lover's. Yep. I remember I was in, uh, playing bowls uh, in England at, uh, at Potter's at the World Indoor Championships, and my jet lag had me up a little bit late one night. And, um, yeah, I was... Bit hungry. I'd only been over there for a day or two, and yep. I called up the local pizza shop. And I said, "Oh, can I just have a, yeah, you know, just a large pizza? You know, just the just the usual, you know, your, the ham, usual. your ham, your cheese, yeah. your tomato, all that, just all the regular yep. components to a pizza." 
<laughs> this pizza turned up and it had sweet corn on it. What the hell is sweet corn? <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I took a couple of bites. And I, I love corn. You know, I love tuna. I love, you know, I pretty much love everything. There's a couple of things I don't like. Coriander definitely being See, one I'm a very fussy eater. I'm the complete opposite of that. But when this pizza arrived, I was with a couple of the, the uh, English players and a few other players, and I said to them, I'm sorry, I cannot eat. I, I think I had two mouthfuls, and I said, I cannot eat anymore. The, see, the what the corn did, it completely, it just... Overpowered? Consumed the whole pizza with oh, flavour. No. And see, that's why I don't have pineapple on my pizza, because... The pineapple for me just consumes the other flavors. Yeah. So that's where I, I understand where you're coming from with the little bit of pineapple. Yeah. So it's know. not too bad and you still get those traditional pizza flavors. It's like I don't mind if a pizza's too cheesy, but if it's too saucy, then I'm not happy. Yes. Okay. I get it. Yep. I don't like a wet pizza. See, I, 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 I can have a little bit of um, anchovies, but I can't have a lot. Nah, no chance. And I can, have, I can just have some sardines on toast. Oh no! So I love my sardines. I love my tuna. I love my salmon. I love and I love anchovies just straight from the container. Oh, you're a better man than I, Baz. <laughs> Braver man than I too. Well, they're good for you too. So um, they are, but I won't go near them. And and knowing what the foods are good for you. So let's look at these athletes. And for example, the Australian Institute of Sport in the training we've had over the years, we have nutrition and and. Uh, we have definitely dietary sessions, and they would them, hate me, I reckon. Yeah, probably because I don't like. I'm a very fussy eater. I'm as basic as it gets. One of them to come of it was. Um, one of them to come of was definitely you know your omegas, your omega threes, and and all that. So, and they're high concentration foods, your sardines and and tunas and so on. So, uh, these athletes now know what food to eat. And how it will complement performance in terms of concentration, energy, and so on. So it's just amazing to see um, the the support they get off the AIS and all the education. Alan Ryan, that is magnificent. And if you can't access something like that yourself, jump online and and have a look around, and you'll notice that there's a lot of good stuff out there um, to to not only help your performance and just the way of diet and exercise, but um, all in all, majority of people out there giving the game a go probably want to improve at some stage, and it might not just be where your bowls finish. It might be just how you set up and prepare. As we see here, well, Jane Rigby, not too Very far close. away. It might be, you know, your little wins, your little 5% improvements, 10% improvements might be just the way you're uh, um, setting up in your prep in terms of food and, and, uh, and nutrition and, and diet. I wish pizza was a superfood, Baz. I'd be one of those... Health, uh, health people that just uh, continues to preach about body as a temple. Unfortunately, pizza isn't a superfood, and Alan Ryan is a superhuman. Yeah, that was perfect speed from Alan. So forehand with weight, just the beauty of that weight was that bowl that got hit up, it stayed around the head. So she could have looked to try and really play that with more more touch, I guess, but... Um, the way the weight control was there, as we see Jane Rigby, well, clear road, nice attempt, beautiful weight. Um, and we speak about that a lot, the contingency. So Alan knew that if she tries, just, just plays that yard of weight, if she misses, she'll finish in a good home. If not, she'll turn that bowl up into the head. And as we saw, it stayed around and it is counting. So it's three to Australia at the moment. But uh, once again, this score, as you see those bowls in there from Zimbabwe, they're right in amongst it. This score really isn't, you know, showcasing the, the the performance of all the players, uh, giving giving it their go, and um, but the conditions this morning, as I've touched yeah. on, they are perfect. Val, like players, this is outside maybe another second or two of pace in the green. But, you know, and you can't do much about that with the moisture from the overnight rain. This it doesn't get any better than that. Um, beautiful cover on the green, nice drawing hands, and hardly a breath of wind. So, yeah, I think we are, in terms of the food conversation, we have, we're have sort of alluding to why it is important and to do with bowls in the high-performance section. So that's a couple of people not uh, not too happy with that. Yes, yeah, and, and that's, and that's but, okay. Yeah, Look, I understand too. Um, right, there is a there is a high-performance element to it and what you can eat, and it is very important to watch what you put in your body at the high-performance level because you need to know... Absolutely, Val. And, and, and well, how your energy levels are up. And the majority of the players, in, or every player in this competition, and a lot of the players that tune in and view, 
what they will, will, will be trying to do is always improve. Now, um, Roger Federer, at the peak of his game, a lot of the athletes at the peak of their sports will have a coach. Now, some would say, why do they have a coach? Uh, if they're the best in the world at their chosen sport, as we see a, a plover uh, out on the green there. No magpies today, but um, why do they still have a coach if they're the best in the world? Because they're always looking to improve. Exactly right. And, and that's even if you're... A, the world's best golfer, tennis, it doesn't matter. Jane Rigby. Just, just missing, missing under. So another multiple to Australia. So, and those, all those components to being the best you can be, um, they may be, okay, obviously you're on green training, but what, what does your fitness look like? What's your core strength look like? Um, are you, you know, doing little simple things like maybe just going for a bit of a bike ride or um, just going for a morning walk, uh, maybe some home-based training, and I can't encourage enough people out there of all levels of the sport. If you're looking just to improve your game, 1%, 2%, doesn't matter. All those little things. And as the, as the legend herself walks past, Karen Murphy, if you were to ask Karen Murphy what are three or four main areas to uh, that, that saw you play at the highest level for so long, I guarantee you Karen would talk about how she prepared herself as an athlete. Yeah. Um, with her diet, with her physical uh, training to contribute to, to good performance. How she still prepares herself. That's right. She's and playing the World Bowls champion or World Champion of Champions straight after this. Next week at Rabina. So if you're on the Gold Coast, get down and watch three straight weeks of World Bowls action. Very much looking forward to that. You'll be able to catch the stream right here on Bowls Australia's Facebook page. Very much looking forward to seeing what Kaz and John O'Davis can do. There's a lot of good players playing there. Is that Kepler, the runner-up from last year? And then also Selena Goddard from New Zealand, Sheldon Bagri, Howley, Ed Morris from England. I, uh, just one of the ones, uh, Val, just while we're touching on, on that component of, of being a better bowler and, and a better athlete as such is... I think the best example is is probably when you look at something like the Tour de France. Oh, one hundred percent. How they how they have to keep refueling. They don't have to put petrol in a bike, of course, but they have to keep refueling their body um, while riding that bike at such a pace. You know, they have to. Uh, they've got their little their little packs in their yep. backpack there, and they put it. They got they got little juices and yep. fruit and stuff like that. So, but it is all. They know they exactly. can't win that race without keeping fueled, and um, and that is what the now you may see that there's hundreds of riders in the Tour de France, but they are all every team is centered around one. As Christina Christie gets very close here, oh, great weight control, just missing under from Christina. But they are all centered around one rider, and if the team leader needs food, someone will go back to the team car and grab him food. Same with water, same if he has a flat tyre or has to have a comfort stop. They will pace him back to the peloton to get him back and remove him from those elements so that they can keep him fueled for when they get to the mountain stages and he needs to be primed to climb up those mountains like Mont Ventoux, Alpe d'Huez. It's not easy. No, and it's not easy day in, day out, even bowl after bowl. And let's say if you look at a club championship game, you know, you're, you're talking sometimes 25 up. It could get well into 25 to 30 ends of bowls. And if you don't have a drink bottle handy or some, some nibbles or some fruit um, and you start deteriorating towards the end of that match and you lose the close match and you'll go home frustrated and upset and say, well, how did I lose that game? It could have been literally how your concentration levels dropped away or, or your energy levels because – your body let let you down. So um, there's so many key components to the game and even your work day, how, how you're fueling yeah. yourself at, at work to get the best out of yourself at work. And Exactly. It's it's funny though, like when you, the difference between working from the office and working from home, I actually drink more water at the office than I do at home. Sorry, I just glanced over there, saw in the comments, Younger Borough. So Robin Williams, hello Robin. I have been to Younger Borough. And what a beautiful part of the world the Tablelands are up near Cairns there. And for me, I uh, at, at what I would have been 39, probably 38 years of age when I went up two or three years ago, to have spent yeah 40 years of my life never having travelled to that area. Big shout out to Younger Younger Borough, 
What a beautiful part of the world. And for anyone tuning in today, try and get to that part of Australia. Uh, the Tablelands, uh, I never really knew anything about the Tablelands around Cairns. Great bowling clubs, Atherton, Younger Borough, and um, yeah, great part of the world. Have you been up there yourself, Val? I've been to Cairns and Port Douglas. It's the furthest north that I've ever been. Um, went up in February this year. It is that part of Queensland is beautiful. Very humid, isn't it? Jane Rigby on the back end. It is beautiful. Yeah, it's um, some beautiful natural lakes. So nice little win there for Karen Sinclair winning the crossover, the lead battle this particular end. And now Alan Ryan, she'll be playing some form of weight here. Forehand, I feel. Looking to sit the bowl, trail the jack. Don't think it's going to get back in time. Only one bowl slightly short of the jack this end. So all players giving their bowl a chance. Jane Rigby just asking if she's holding shots. She is. So she needs to probably just take two feet of weight off here. Jane, backhand, using a wide drawing bowl. As we see, that's out on a high line. Coming back nicely here. Just needs to turn in now. Weight looks pretty good. Is it going to be enough? I not sure. Two it is. So, the Australians just continue to forge on. This is exactly what they want. Now, England and Malta involved in a really tight tussle over there. 12 ends played. It's 10-9 in favour of Tolchard and Faro. Rickson's are forging and fighting. Zimbabwe down by 18 here. Four ends to play. The Aussies have been absolutely ruthless. Zimbabwe down by 18 with four to play. So an, an end win to the Australians here will seal the result. So green speed for me, just on 14 seconds. And the way this bowl's heading in this direction right now, it's heading to the east. And it's heading towards a slight, slight easterly, or slight southeasterly breeze this morning. But yeah, it's definitely one of the calmer days we've had so far, Val. We, um, we've seen some decent winds in and out the days since we've been broadcasting. The, uh, probably about a month ago, there was not much wind around at all and we've just had probably a, a bit of a front come through the last month to six weeks where we've had that southeaster coming through most days as Alan gives Christina a massive applause there saying great start and that's, that's ideal, you know, Jack High in and around the Jack, first bowl, just giving it a chance on a long length, Jack length around about 32 metres so a long length jack into that slight southeast up. As we see here, Karen Sinclair needing to correct. Oh, it's a pretty good bowl. Well, two foot short, but it's uh, probably probably the longest end for the match, having the jack just off the tee and the mat right back. So players really having to lunge into this. A bit more body weight, a bit more... Yeah, that's done enough, Christina. So really good shot from her. Two good bowls. We're going to see Karen Sinclair change over to the forehand here. More options forehand. So she can afford to arrive, sit bowl or trail jack or work in behind the jack, and give her skip Jane Rigby a bit of an opportunity. So forehand... Even if she goes in the ditch, she would have uh, given Jane a good look. So ideally you don't want to go in the ditch, but if you happen to trickle into the ditch trying to arrive for your skip, at least it gives your skipper a good indication on how that shot looks. Whereas if you fall six or eight foot short, that's not going to give your skipper a look at all. They'll be still left wondering on what the shot looks like. So there is some contingencies to come with that um, if you're a lead so Christina same thing here if she doesn't change anything even trickles into the ditch she still gives Alan a full look at what the shot looks like and and uh, now Jane Rigby's left guessing a little bit uh, what's it how's it going to turn what's the weight look like but 
I'm sure a play of her ability, she won't be a far away here, the way this head sets up. Not at all. So, Australia, the situation is with three ends to play after this. They win the end. They win the match. They lose the end. They'll most likely win it on the next end. But they have been sensational from go to woe. They've dropped four ends in this match, raced down to a 13-0 lead. Zimbabwe scoreline definitely doesn't reflect how close they've been to the head at a lot of times. Australia have just been absolutely on. And they've drawn three in really close when Zimbabwe have had a few not too far away. Yeah, and what I particularly like here, Val, is Zimbabwe scored from the previous end. They've gone ditch to ditch, well, pretty much the longest, and what Christina did is replied straight away. So that's a great sign that both players are in rhythm. They're finally tuned here for all the lengths. So Christina didn't roll the jack. Zimbabwe did, and she responded with two bowls inside a foot. Yeah, you're exactly right. And looking over, Baz, it looks like Malta could be holding three or four on that far rink over there. They're down 10-9. Yeah, very, very formidable pair. Malta, uh, Ricks and Girls, um, you know, they've played, well, they've come up for, through the Queensland Juniors and gone on to the highest of heights. And it's just great to see once again uh, two sisters going at it with the support of their dad up on the grandstand there. Always got the camera with him. He's <laughs> a really good photographer for bowls. He's snapping away there. And, um, well... So... Yeah, so I wouldn't be surprised if they don't push England all the way or potentially come away with the win. But, yeah, it's a big, big matchup, like you said, Bell. Well, Connie and Rebecca got uh, bronze at the 2018 Com Games in women's fours. Is that one, well, that's probably just rocked Alan Ryan in for third there. So that's a bit of a disaster for, from a Zimbabwe point of view. England have wrestled shot back, so 11-9 the lead to the English after 13 over Malta. Oh no, 10 all. They got the uh, they got the score wrong, so Malta did score 10 all after 13 that match. With five ends to play. Still anybody's as Alan Ryan gets one right around the back and a big thumbs up from Christina Christic. So the Aussies continue to push and the match, well, with a four there, all they had to do was get a one. The result is determined. Australia will win. It's just a matter of by how much now. They lead it by 22. Very healthy for the shot difference, Barry Lester. Yeah, there's always that extra component to these matches, and that is trying to cash in onto the shots when you can. And, um, yeah, it's just the way the game does present itself. Um, as you see, the score 28-6, Sinclair and Rigby, well, they'll walk away going, you know what, we played all right here. We, um, but they've, they've, you know, they've had to come up against, I'd say, probably the favourites, probably the favourites for this event, so... Um, you know, I mean, the current Com Games pairs, even though this is their first hit out at World Champs, but to, to be the current Com Games gold medalist, I'm sure that, well, yeah, that's that's why they're probably yeah. the favourites. Christina, that's that's just rhythm for me. I'm just what really watching her technique. Everything just seems to be flowing very well. And probably you, if you ask any of their high-level players, if they do have a bit of a rough game or, or, or a rough couple of bowls, it will all generally come back to rhythm and technique. So but when you're on the top of your game, it just everything feels in rhythm. And generally the best way to do that is to work on your, on your technique, work on your game, and then go out and put the hours in. And that's what Christine and Alan do. They train hard. And uh, they really work on, this, on their game and their technique. And as we've seen recently, they've been rewarded heavily. Michael Flanagan, yes, they, the Rixons are playing for Malta. Maltese heritage for the two sisters. And they are playing with distinction.
Absolutely brilliant performance from Ryan and Christic this morning. Yeah, nice They've been shot here. Absolutely ruthless as Karen Sinclair gets one at the back. So, Baz, how much, you know, the morning session is often very important because it sets up the rest of your day. How much does a big win now set up the rest of Australia's day? Gives them some confidence. They're playing on the green well. You know, they'd, they'd be pretty pleased with this. Yeah, in a perfect world, Val, they would love to be able to, you know, play on this rink all day long, this direction all day long, because they've really found it, as we see Christina, switching to the other hand with confidence. But that's what makes this... Um, these championships, these the Australian Opens, etc., the hardest in the event in the world to win because of the all the multiple rinks, multiple directions, clubs, and everything they play on. So I really want to emphasise that these teams and these countries are really going to earn any success they get here, and they've got to do it by proving their wares over many days in m multiple conditions and various various events. So. Uh, these players here today, Christina and Alan, after stepping off this green, they'll do a quick debrief, talk about length, talk about what worked, um, what what did they do well, what could they do better. But all in all, they have to completely start again. I wouldn't be surprised if, if they don't change directions. They'll definitely probably move to another area in the green. And straight away, that faces a new challenge. And um, swapping directions is another big challenge. You, you'll see if you switch to the north versus south, There'll be hands drawing different sides, be uh, different sizes, so it's that readjustment. But you've got to grab all the goodness of this, Val, and just run with it and, yep. and try and set yourself up for the rest of the day. Well, they're going to run with it into the bye next. Christic and Ryan. They get a nice little break where they can enjoy some lunch, maybe scout out the English. And, and that, what that in itself, Val, so same thing. You know, That in itself is a challenge. Because you've got all this momentum and then it stops. And then what does, how do you grab the momentum post the buy? And I would have thought the first thing they would do is go, well, let's do what we did well this morning. So there you go. That's another good example of what the game presents itself. When you've got a buy, well, what, do you, what does that look like? What do you do during the buy and how do you pr prepare for that last game? And it's a big break, a good couple of hours of sitting around where you're listening to music, you're going away. Uh, maybe go back and watch some of this game. Grab yep. some highlights. So, exactly. yeah, that's, it's actually a good little challenge for them as well. Exactly. Well, Zimbabwe, they'll face Fiji's Elizabeth Motsewe and Losalini Dikoya, who had a pretty good singles campaign herself. And then in the final session of the day, right back here on rink 19 here at Club Helensvale, it'll be Australia versus England. Christic and Ryan in uh, against Pharaoh and Tolchard. That is, they'll be changing direction, however. We're bowling east west now. We'll be going north south in that final session of the day. Australia have been monumental this morning. Should be very proud of this. Ryan with her final bolt of this end. Trying to really get this shot's difference back in the Aussies' favour. They're plus nine, which isn't bad, but a big win here could get them into the 30s. Johnny Pierce asking, Baz, maybe we'll get your answer after this bowl from... Jane Rigby, but is match play the best form of practice? Uh, it can be, definitely. You know, ideally you want to be playing with someone that's, uh, if not as good as you, but better uh, in your eyes um, because, um, you know, you want to be tested every time you go out and play. Um, but with match pra practice also, you want to be making sure that that match practice is across all the different formats. So if, you've, if you're playing a lot of singles, pairs, triples, fours. Um, and then, as I mentioned a lot the other day, simulated practice so go out and play match practice but maybe say put the scoreboard up at um, let's say you're playing a singles game go flick the scoreboard on you're on 18 and your opposition's on 22 or you're 15 and your opposition's 22 how do you approach that from the get-go first stand in simulated practice what what's what length are you throwing what hand are you playing what does your body language look like what's your energy look like so these are all the answers to questions i get asked because 
a lot of the times it's Barry, how do I win the tight games? How do I win games when there's a lot of pressure involved and you've you never ever practice it or, or set up any simulations at, at your club. So when the game's on the line and you're in a position where you wonder how to win and how to do certain things, well, you've got to practice that. Don't just go out and roll up with your friend. Set up some simulations. So, yep. so to you, Johnny, so to you, Johnny, simulate what, what you want to be tested. It might be um, setting up some heads where you're four or five down and you've got to play a big one, draw into the ditch. Simulate as best practice you can and under those environments, the pressure and all that, and get out and do it. And, and um, yeah, great question, mate, and good luck with your bowls. Barry Lestat giving you all the insights here on Ringside Live. Zimbabwe scored on the last end, so 28-7 to 7 is the Australian lead. The result is determined. Of course, we play the full allotment of 18 ends because shots up matter in the sectional rounds because they can be the uh, deciding factor as to whether you get through to the quarterfinals or not. We've seen teams miss by percentage and all those sorts of figures. And Australia, this is going to go a long way to determining the, whether they can get through or not. Up next, Aaron Wilson. Baz, he'll take on Tony Chung, a very good singles player in his own right, but Aaron uh, Wilson... He is in a very fast mood. Yeah, I've had some good battles with Tony over the years um, in singles. And, yeah, there's, there's no doubt about it. He can play. And um, he, he's got a pretty much every shot in the book. And, yeah, Aaron will have his work cut out for sure. He will know that. Aaron, you know, he's been around long enough now. He, he knows what the players are capable of. And, but Aaron will just stick to what he does. And that's, um, you know, be aggressive when needed. But Aaron's um, the all-round player. And... Such a confidence player. You know, early on, he, if he gets a couple of shots um, working out for him, Aaron, yeah, he definitely grows another leg. I've had the pleasure of watching Aaron come up through the ranks since he was probably 15, 16 years of age. And I remember the first time I ever saw him, I just said, yes, this guy's definitely going to make it. I uh, couldn't wait to couldn't wait to um, play alongside him one day. And fortunately enough, when he debuted for Victoria... Uh, I was in the same rink as him, and guess what he went and did? What did he do? Player of the series. Ha, of course. Player of the series. So uh, Aaron Wilson's first series was against the ACT at Wangaratta Bowling Club. Uh, the rink was Matthew Flapper, myself, Dylan Fisher, and Aaron Wilson. So, well, four internationals, actually. So Matthew Flapper knows how to pick a rink, doesn't he? Um, Certainly does, Matthew <laughs> Flapper. He's a, he's a star. He's not just a good bowler. He's just a ripping bloke, and... You see him at the Bowls Premier League, and how wonderful would it be to have someone like Matty Flapper on your team? You have had him on your team before, Baz. Um, you know, he's just such a booming presence, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. And um, Matthew Flapper, well, he's uh, yeah, he's a big he's a big name, big personality, but just puts back into the sport all the time, which is and great. He, and he does. He's you know the coach of the Victorian Junior Team. Just pulling up there, Jane. Jane Rigby just uh, still probably finds herself two down. But, yeah, so Aaron Wilson, um, that first series, he came out and played second and just looked at home playing open state-level bowls. And uh, since then, really hasn't really hasn't looked back. Um, Aaron, he's um, had his, uh, had a few different stints in New South Wales and back in Victoria. And that's the, they're the challenges of, you know, trying to make it in a high-level sport and as an athlete. And Aaron's... Um, been well supported by Cabramatta Bowls Club. He's had his time down there at Brighton as well. And, yeah, so great to see Aaron in action again this week in singles. And, yeah, he's uh, recently engaged. So yes. spoke about things off, off the green, about setting all that up. And Aaron's now got a beautiful little daughter. And I said to him the other day, just yell out when you want an MC, mate, because I <laughs> MC'd your brother's wedding. I don't mind doing yours as well. So oh, Very nice. <laughs> What about, will DJ Blessed make an appearance? I, uh, saw, I saw you at the Com Games, DJ Blessed. Uh, you maybe, never know. Maybe you not. never know. Depending on the wedding. Yeah, it so gets no, rowdy enough. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, but good luck to um, Jamie Lee and Aaron, um, you know, with uh, with wedding plans and can't wait to see how it all pans out on the big day. So, uh, Christina Christick here, forehand, asking Alan Ryan to... 
Trail the jack around the front. So you watch she's pretty not close far here. away. Alan Ryan might just miss high or might just draw the shot herself. I reckon she has. Sitting right behind the jacks. It's gonna have to be something brilliant from Jane Rigby. Here in this penultimate end. This match is over, of course we know, but shots up are everything. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Just out in the high line, this one. It's, if it gets back, it, it'd be a close. The weight's beautiful. Well, it got to the line weight-wise. Just a fraction high from Jane. So Alan Ryan with one more. 28 to 7. The margin at 21. The Aussies trying to get their shot difference into the 30s and try and catch the English Yeah, so having a chat here with Karen Murphy is Alan Ryan, and so now is Christina. So this is so what I love about this. You would have you would actually think that probably game is on the line if you were sitting on the in the sidelines here. If you just walked into the venue and you saw Karen Murphy chatting to Christina Christic and Alan Ryan, like they were, you would think a few things. It's a big big moment in the match, high pressure moment, and they're looking to get as much advice off their coach as they can. But it's not. It's actually the second last end of the match, and they're up by 21 shots. But this is how you've got to approach the game. End by, every end is the same, no matter what the situation and how you approach it. So the shot, this shot that's presented itself here might have presented itself on the third or fourth end, but you've got to approach it the same way. So what I'm loving about this is Alan Ryan's having a good long chat about the good, the bad, the ugly of this, the, having a risk assessment, because there are some risks involved here, but all in all, if she does play this shot right, as we're seeing with weight, she can make three or four here, looking for the front red bowl clean. She's not far away. Chrissy likes it. No, Jack. Well, just clipping the front. Get her own, but not a bad effort at all. So one to Australia. They move to 29-7. to seven. And the Aussies, well, they have been... Monumental this morning. They have monstered Zimbabwe. And they'll go into the bye feeling pretty fresh. Yeah, so that risk assessment, you've got to, when you're setting up early in a game, there'll be a few times there where you might be discussing the shot with your third and you're standing down the other end as a skipper and you're just listening to your third and you're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, second, third, fourth, and you're just feeling your way into the game. Go, oh, yeah, no worries. I'll just come down on the forehand. You haven't gone down for a look. You haven't gone and done your risk assessment. You haven't looked at all the things that the third may be indicating to you. You've got to get down there. I know you'll get down there when the game's on the line and have a look because all of a sudden the game's on the line. Well, the game's on the line every every end. So you've got to be going down, having a look, doing your risk assessment, do your little 360 view of the head. We saw that last week, Val. I think it was, um, I'm trying to think what player that was. Uh, I think it might have oh, it was Kelsey Cottrell, yes. that's right, in the, yep. in, in the women's fours. Yeah. Walk down, little 360 to the head, bit of a quick chat with her third, and then walk away and play the shot. So if it's N1 that you've sort of got a bit of a tricky situation, you've got to go down and have a look. It does not matter if it's N1 or N21. You've got to play the shot and, and play the, the to the head on its merits. And if you do do it and do it well and it pays off, well, hopefully, ideally, come the... 18th or 21st or 25th end. Hopefully the game isn't on the line because you executed all the right things early on. Exactly. So Australia, this is the final end. They lead it by 22. Shot difference of plus 31 on a live ladder. England leading Malta 14-10 on the far rink. So the Rixons have slipped behind. It was a good end from Tolchard and Vero from what I saw. So Australia and England... Firming as the teams to beat. Zimbabwe will be up against Fiji next. England will take on the Netherlands. The Dutch lead Japan 18 11. They're sitting in second at the moment, so they're firming as a challenger as well. Inika Spangenberg. Skip team. And then Hong Kong, China leading 
Switzerland and the Lara Butler skip squad there from Marianne Kunzler. Twenty nine to seven. Australia have been. This is the exact way they would have wanted to start this day. Finishing off with a loss to the Rixons at Paradise Point yesterday. Malta looked the goods. They haven't been able to stop England so far, but that match still has, I think, three ends to play. That's after 15, so three more to go. Malta still very well and truly in that one for the fans of the Rixons there, the Australians. We know this one is over. Jane Rigby, 2002 Commonwealth Games participant in Manchester. Jimmy Reynolds also, also still going from Manchester. Alex Marshall was there as well. Australian national coach Gary Willis was part of the Australian team there at Manchester in 2002. Ellen Ryan with her... An ultimate bowl of this contest. They zoned in early, Baz. One on the first end, it was a tight one. Allen got it with her last bowl. Then a two and a four. Really broke it open. They raced out to a 13-0 lead after six, the Aussies. And the score at the moment, well, they're averaging... Over one and a half an end, which is pretty impressive in an 18 end pairs game. Yeah, and, and well done to Zimbabwe as we see Jane Rigby nearly getting a backflip there into the into the count. Um, once again, played some beautiful shots, played some great heads, but just getting outnumbered by the Aussies. There was probably at least half a dozen heads there at most other levels of the game. You'd be walking away with multiples, but way uh, the girls have just set some of the heads up, Christina and Ellen, being able to dictate terms, and that's what's created the the big deficit, just the amount of bowls in the head in good, good positions. Alan Ryan just going past, so the Aussies will hold one going into the final bowl. Can they crack the 30? Or can Jane Rigby finish in style going into their next match against the Fijians as we watch it come down? Handshake about to come. See what the score will be. It'll just be one of the Aussies who do crack the 30. They win it 30-7 to in a ruthless display of bowls. Absolutely magnificent from Chris Dick and Ryan, the Commonwealth Games champions from last year. Rigby and Karen Sinclair did not play badly in any sense of the word. The Aussies were just well and truly too good, Barry Lester. Yeah, and once again, a big shout-out to the Zimbabwean pair. Um, they play against one of the, if not the favourites for this tournament. So <clears throat> played some really good draw bowls, um, slightly outnumbered probably throughout the match, but... Uh, full credit to them and, and well done to Christina and Alan. I'm sure they'll enjoy their little bye now and be back this afternoon to see if they can get two from two today. Thank you very much, Baz. Well played yet again. Thanks, Val. So, Val Febo and Barry Lester here with you on Ringside Live at Club Helensvale. The Australians, Christic and Ryan, have got the job done over Zimbabwe. Sinclair and Rigby, 30-7 to seven in a brilliant display. We'll be back in just over an hour's time because it's going to be Aaron Disco Wilson up against Tony Chung of Hong Kong, China. That's men's singles action coming your way after this before Ryan and Christic yet again in the Commonwealth Games final rematch against Tolchard and Farrow in the final session of the day. We'll catch you soon.